Hey everybody, welcome to Mailing It, the official podcast of the United States Postal Service. I'm Dale Parsan. And I'm Carla Kirby. Dale, it's hard to believe, but the winter holidays will be here really soon. It's a great time of the year and a very busy one for the Postal Service. I mean, when you stop and think about how many people celebrate the holidays, the Postal Service plays a very big role. Absolutely, Carla. Our letter carriers are out there delivering greeting cards and packages. Our retail outlets sell special holiday-themed stamps. And letters to Santa are a long-standing tradition during the holidays. I'm sure there's a lot more that we do that's not coming to mind right now. Well, then it's a good thing that we have Sheila Holman here with us for this episode. Sheila is the Postal Service's VP of Marketing, and she's going to tell us a little bit about the Postal Service's special connection with the holidays. We'll also talk to Sheila about how she and her team go about informing our customers of all the ways we help bring the holidays home for people. Welcome to Mailing It, Sheila. Hello. Thank you. Excited to be here. Absolutely. Uh, Sheila, why don't we start by telling everyone what you do as the Postal Service's uh, VP of Marketing? Sure. Um, So I joined the Postal Service in January of 2021. Um, I've spent uh, about 20 years of my career in marketing, but all in the private sector. So my role here, I oversee the marketing organization, which includes branding, strategy and insights, sales lead generation, and the stamps program. But In a nutshell, essentially a big piece of my role is to really drive revenue and to help us compete, to market and sell our products and services. So I have a team of strategists, creators, innovators, and activators. And together, we're focused on serving the mission of the Postal Service and serving the American public. Okay, Sheila, that sounds like a lot. Given all that you do, what would you say is your favorite part of the job? My favorite part of the job is just where we are right now. It's such an exciting time to be at this organization. And quite frankly, this is why I joined the organization. We are really at this moment of tremendous transformation. And you don't often get opportunities like this in your career to really have a seat at the table to help an organization that's going through such tremendous change and transformation. And I was really inspired when I was going through the interview process and I met Postmaster General DeJoy. I was really inspired by his vision and everything he's trying to do here. And um, so it's for me, it's an opportunity to be part of an American story and part of a great American brand. I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, I've been with the organization close to 11 years and I've been able to see the transformation of the organization since then. I connect a lot with what you're saying. It's something that uh, it feels really special, especially with an organization with such a long history and that's so impactful for the American people. So as Carla and I were discussing earlier, the winter holidays are almost here. Uh, Sheila, from your perspective, what makes such a strong connection between the holiday season and the Postal Service? So it's really hard to imagine the holiday season without the Postal Service. I mean, a big piece of our role is connecting people. And the holidays are all about connections. So, you know, functionally, we're delivering most of the mail and packages that time of year. And a big differentiator for us is that we literally go everywhere. We go (laughs) to every address, six days, sometimes seven days a week. So the Postal Service is is so visible throughout the year. Most people, again, like you said, get mail every day. They're seeing their letter carriers and mail trucks in their neighborhood. Why does the Postal Service do a special marketing campaign during the holidays every year? So the holiday is such an important season for us. In many ways, it's really our game day and where we really need to bring the best of what we do. And, you know, as a brand, we're really very much ubiquitous. I mean, we're out there. People may not necessarily think about us every day, but and being ubiquitous is a little bit of a double-edged sword for a marketer. People see us, but they don't always think about what we do. And so the challenge is to really break through the clutter and be relevant and timely. And not just at the holiday, but really all year long, a lot of what I'm trying to do is work to make the USPS brand more modern, more culturally relevant, and really drive it forward. 
And so we need to be in front of customers in a consistent way that goes beyond just that everyday mail delivery. And the holiday season is the perfect time of year to remind the nation and our customers of what we do and what we offer. Sheila, is there a particular business rationale for for what these holiday campaigns have to achieve? Yeah. So as I said, this is one of the biggest moments for us in, you know, throughout the year. And, you know, more than ever, what we do is we're, you know, we're competing for customers. You know, most people may not know that the Postal Service generally receives no tax dollars for operating expenses. And we rely solely on the sale of postage, our products, and our services to fund our operations. And so we need to, just like a business, we need to convince consumers and businesses that they should ship with us. And we need to convince them that they should ship with us because we are fast, reliable, and we go everywhere. We are ready, and we're ready for the holidays. And our holiday performance can really influence whether people use the Postal Service or a competitor moving forward. So let's talk about the campaigns. What goes into a holiday marketing campaign each year? And what are some of the different elements that go into the campaign? Yeah, absolutely. So every holiday campaign that we create is something that I call an integrated campaign, meaning that it has multiple components and multiple touch points. So for example, we of course produce a 30-second video ad, but we also create digital ads that might show up in your feed when you're searching. We create uh, social media assets that would come up when you're, when you're searching on social media or when you're just scrolling through. Um, we create a print ad that we'll see in uh, a variety of magazines that are targeted towards the audience that we're trying to reach. Uh, we produce a radio ad. Um, we also use what I call our, our owned channels. So we'll, you'll see signage in our post office retail locations. You'll see um, advertising on USPS.com. We have our informed delivery app, and we'll also put messaging on that as well. With it being a national campaign, I'm not surprised that it's, it sounds very involved, but when do we get started? How, how much in advance of the holiday season campaign do we have to start thinking about these things? So we start thinking about next year's holiday campaign the minute this year's holiday campaign ends. We do a lot of work while the campaign's running to track it, track performance, see if, if it's resonating. We also take a look at the sales and our revenue we earned during the holiday season to see if the, the campaign helped drive that. And so we start building out uh, and thinking about the strategy for next year. In the spring, we usually start, um, start concepting and you know, identifying that strategy and creating the new concepts that we'll then put into test. Wonderful. Yeah. So with all that being said, you know, what are the insights that you've tapped into for this year? And what is this year's campaign theme? So you know, this year is unique. We are, and I feel like we said this last year too, but then we had the, the variant pop up. But, you know, people, I think, are really feeling like they're finally, we're finally coming out of the pandemic, knock on wood. Um, but yet we still have to deal with things like supply chain issues and higher prices. And so people look are really looking forward to this holiday season, I think, in a bit of a different way. There's almost this, sen this sense of heightened expectations this year than we've seen in years past. And so our message this year, so that was the insight. And then our message this year is really about instilling confidence that we are there for them. We are, we are there to deliver for them, and we are delivering for America. We want to convince consumers and businesses that they should ship with us, again, because we're fast, reliable, and we go everywhere. We're ready, and we're holiday ready. And that's really the theme. We are holiday ready. All right. So holiday ready. That feels very ominous. Why don't you break that down for me in the audience a little bit? Yeah. So I think, you know, at sort of at the rational level, if you will, I mean, it's about instilling confidence, instilling the, that the confidence that we will deliver. We are delivering fast, reliable service. So that's sort of the rational piece of it. Then there's the emotional piece of it. And it's really capturing that the, the humanity 
and the connection that the Postal Service has with every American. If you think about our carrier, you know, we're coming to your house almost every day. And that that connection that you have, that you know them, you see them. And so we really want to capture that that emotional connection of the, the familiarity that you have, which also instills confidence and gives you that sort of that warm feeling that you also have around the holiday season. Confidence and reliability. I like it. Uh, let, let's take a step back to last year's theme. Uh, it was the helpers. One thing I found interesting was that during that TV ad, it included actual Postal Service employees. Could you talk to me a little bit about that? Yeah, you know, we always cast real employees in all of our commercials. And we do this because we want to celebrate the hardworking people of the United States Postal Service who are every day dedicated to their mission, serving every address six, sometimes seven days a week. And so this dedication is a key aspect of our brand and showing that authenticity. So we actually have a casting call, and employees can submit videos of themselves um, to apply. You just go to uspsdelivers.com slash cast, and you submit a video. You have to fill out a few questions and a form, um, but it's a pretty simple process. We run this casting call all year long because we cast not just in our holiday campaign, but any other advertising that we do. So if you're listening, again, it's uspsdelivers.com slash cast to full, apply. <laughs> full disclosure, uh, I applied a few years ago to be a caroler in one of our Postal Service commercials. Unfortunately, I wasn't selected, but I won't hold that against you, Sheila. <laughs> So we have 650,000 employees. We're a massive organization. And we call those employees brand ambassadors, right? Because they represent us every day. Tell me how those brand ambassadors help to fulfill the holiday-ready mission. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, in many ways, I think our employees are one of the biggest superpowers that we have as an organization. They are out there. They are representing the brand. They are having interactions with customers and consumers in the American public and really, you know, through their pride and their um, dedication to our mission, they're really reinforcing all of the things that the Postal Service stands for. So they are huge ambassadors in carrying our message forward and what we do every day. What have you found to be the most challenging part of putting together the holiday marketing campaign outside of, of course, selecting carolers? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, hear, I hear it's very competitive. <laughs> <laughs> so I think with any campaign, it's always a big challenge to break through and represent the brand in a way that gets noticed. And we also want to make sure that where we're running the campaign, that it's going to get noticed and that we're reaching our audience where they're, you know, where they're interacting and where they're going to see the media. So you might see the campaign pop up in your social media feed. You might see it when you're searching online, perhaps when you're watching television or watching your streaming content or reading a magazine. So it's not just the challenge is not just creating a great message, but putting that message in a place where people will see it. So what does marketing success look like for you during the holiday season? So we actually run, when we're running our, our advertising during the season, we do um, a tracking study that we look at to see, we do, it's called a pre-post study. So we look at certain measures before the campaign runs and then certain measures after the campaign runs. So a big measure that we use is we look to see, did the messaging break through? Were people playing back the messages that we wanted them to play back? So that's how we evaluate whether the campaign performed. We also look at things like revenue. Did we grow revenue during that period? And um, other business factors. For this holiday campaign, are we including any of the essential dates that mailers need to know about for, for getting things delivered on time closer to the holidays? Yes. We actually do a mailer every year, every holiday season, with all of that information. We send it to everyone in the country so they know the dates, the ship-by dates and delivery dates. Uh, we also include information on our holiday stamps. 
I always get excited about the new stamps. Can you share with us what will be coming out this year? Absolutely, yes. Our stamp program is, again, something that just makes the Postal Service so unique. And every year we release new holiday stamps. So this year we have four new stamps that were have recently just been released. The first one is Holiday Elves. Um, and then we also have Virgin and Child, a Hanukkah-themed stamp, and a Kwanzaa-themed stamp. Definitely we'll be looking for those in the retail postal offices. And you can also buy our stamps online as well at USPS.com. Sheila, thank you for joining us today. As usual, it's been extremely informative. Definitely will have my eye open for the stamps and for our brand ambassadors across the country. And I may be applying again to be a caroler. So just saying, if you need anybody else, keep an eye out. Thank you. Thank you, Carla. Thank you, Dale. It was a lot of fun to be here today, and um, I'm happy to come back anytime. All right, Carla, it's time for Did You Know? This is a chance for us to share some interesting details about the Postal Service that most people probably don't know. I've got a good one today. Do you mind if I lead things off? Go ahead. Wonderful. So, much like the Postal Service, the sport of baseball is one of America's oldest and most celebrated institutions. Did you know that the two share an interesting connection? Like what? Well, you've been to the National Postal Museum here in Washington, D.C., right? Of course. Did you know that the Washington Nationals used to have their home field on that very site? Wait a minute. Didn't the Postal Museum open up like 10 years before the Nationals moved here from Montreal? 12, actually. But we're talking about an earlier Washington Nationals. The earlier National League team existed for only four seasons, from 1886 through 1889, and they played at the 6,000-seat Capitol Park just north of the Capitol Building. After the team folded, the site was later developed into Washington's main post office, which eventually became the museum. I did not know that. Yeah, there's actually a baseball exhibit at the Postal Museum right now celebrating the 150th anniversary of professional baseball. It's called Baseball, America's Home Run, and it runs through January 2025. They've got a ton of fascinating artifacts, including fan mail to Jackie Robinson and baseball-themed commemorative stamps. There's also some memorabilia from the Hall of Fame in Cooperstown and private collections that have never been on display before. That definitely sounds like a must-visit for anyone who's a fan of the game. So for my fact, we're going to take things from America's pastime to man's best friend. Gotta love dog stories, right? So right before the old Washington Nationals began playing here in the East, a black and white collie named Dorsey made a name for himself as a successful mailman out in California. Wait, a dog mailman? Well, a male dog is technically more accurate. <laughs> The scruffy stray was adopted by Everett Stacy, the postmaster of Calico, a silver mining town in present-day San Bernardino County. One day, Stacy wanted to send a letter to his brother Olwen at the Bismarck Mine Camp several miles away. Instead of making the hike himself, he tied the letter to Dorsey's neck and sent him off to Bismarck. Did Dorsey make it? Actually, he came back wagging the next day with Olwen's reply tied around his neck. After a few more successful test runs, Dorsey became the unofficial courier for the route. A special mailbag was even made for Dorsey that could be strapped onto his back. A January 1886 story in the San Francisco Chronicle about Dorsey reported on his popularity with the miners and how they would order extra beefsteak for him every night. Now again, I would show up for a steak every night. <laughs> That's great. How long did he carry mail? Only about a year, then he reportedly got to enjoy a nice retirement in a San Francisco mansion with one of the Bismarck Mine owners. Love a good dog story. That wraps up this episode of Did You Know? Carla, another great episode today with Sheila Holman. Uh, we got to hear a lot about uh, the holiday mailing campaign. What was something that stood out to you? I think one of the biggest things that stood out to me is the level of effort that goes into this. So it's a year-long planning to get us to the campaign, and then all of the marketing that goes into pushing the information out to the American folks. Yeah, a whole heck of a lot of work goes into it. And, you know, it's, it's a friendly reminder that we operate in a competitive space. We have to make sure that we're coming up with fresh ideas to remind our customers that we are an option, we can deliver 
we have reliability and we have great service performance. Absolutely. And of course, the stamps. (laughs) Always the stamps. Always the stamps. Four new stamps this year that you can get in the retail offices and online. Do you think you're going to try and apply next year for uh, the holiday campaign? Caroler is absolutely on the top of my list. What if, what if we uh, what if we apply together? Maybe do a little duo. Yep, I think it's going to work. I like it. <laughs> so that's it for this episode of Mailing It. Don't forget to subscribe to Mailing It wherever you get your podcast to make sure you don't miss the next episode. And follow along on Instagram at U.S. Postal Service, Twitter at USPS, and of course on Facebook. Thank you.